Welcome, everyone. We finally got Nate. He allows me to call him Nate on the show tonight. Um, I told him this is not a podcast. I tell you all this is not a podcast. I just talk to interesting people, people that blow my mind. Nate is going to be one of those, and hopefully with you, too. I talk about astrotheology. I talk about just basically stuff that blows your mind. That's why my um, channel is called Truth Bombs, because that's what I try and do. Okay? We're going to talk demonology today. We're going to learn. We're going to learn us some. Okay, so Nathaniel is an expert or Nate is an expert in demonology. Okay, and I told him he can have beer on the air. He can have cigarettes. Um, you know, you can light a bowl. I don't care. Just don't do any hard drugs. Like I'm going to stop you if you're going to do a line of cocaine, but um, <laughs> tiger just, blood, some tiger blood, no tiger mm -hmm. blood, some tiger blood, some adrenochrome, mm -hmm. you know, um, so Basically, let's. How do we start this off? So, as far back as I could think, we could start with the Sumerians, right? So, mm -hmm. what what is it that you know about the Sumerians and their and 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 have have demons always been the sort of uh, as we know them in society, the sort of stereotypical dark, shadowy evil entities that that the evil Satanists pray to. Like, take me on to that. Well, there's a term in academia, and it's. Uh yesterday's gods are tomorrow's demons and so every every mythology begins with someone that they pray to and then another religion as they evolve according to antiquity next thing you know there's a religion that you bam we're out there hey that god's a demon forget about that god we have another god mm -hmm. um according to my research at least what we're dealing with in modernity it, they're the same beings that we experienced in antiquity they're just wearing different masks um and it's not just me uh, it's some of the leading people in my field of demonology are saying the same things. Uh, so in terms of Sumerian experiencers, right, um, we have to weed out uh, the, the different demonological terms. And so it's one thing we we're talking about the other day about Satan and all of this thing, you know, all that stuff. Uh, so what I've stri striven to do in my research is to, to weed out the, the basic prosaic explanations versus somebody who just goes out there and says you know what i think that famine is a demon right famine itself has agency and so that's the demon of famine that's not true it's just you know natural occurring events throughout the earth however that, that doesn't uh doesn't mean there aren't malevolent entities like lamash um that that people are experiencing and so when you get into Sumerian technology even we're experiencing that there you know we get another whole show like that um, but what I feel about the Sumerians is, again, each and every religion is seemingly evolving according to their awareness of the world around them. And so when I was growing up, I was I grew up Pentecostal, which is, you want to talk about mysticism, brother. Oh, my right. God. They're the most mystic aspect of Christianity. Um, but what I started realizing was, you know what, a lot of these beings had been encountered by people, but they were being called different names, Right. And so when you, you know, linguistics, you know, you have what's called a dialectical allomorph. So you have the same being that's being called different names with different spellings. Right. Same entity throughout, the, throughout history. And so that's what I'm doing now. Um, I'm merging into, my, my dad's a big fan of astrotheology, like you are. Like he's, he freaking kills it, dude. He's, you're, you're incredible as well, man. So I respect you guys both. Uh, my research consists around bypassing depth or, or bypassing descriptions that makes sense yeah. a description of an entity and looking at the bloody footprints of the snow okay I, I know we call it that but are they the same species of spirit that right. makes sense you know right and that's what i'm realizing now the sumerians i 100 believe they were in contact with these these things these beings um but according to my research they have evolved according to our awareness of them and so many of them to this day are positioning themselves as deities, right. gods, ghosts, all of the above. Um, and so that's, what we're, that's, where, that's where I'm at my research. So, we're, so real quick, I, I, need, I yeah. need to understand this. Are we yeah. Okay, so we only have like 1% of our visual and audio spectrum. We know that like cats mm -hmm. and dogs have higher mm -hmm. levels of it, dolphins, animals. We can go into all that, right? Right, right. So we know there's, there's what we perceive as reality is not the truth. Okay. Right. So are that so I guess are these things extra dimensional 
Are they in higher dimensions or are they in our dimension and we just can't perceive them? Well, I could tell you what history recalls. The earliest, the earliest text of what we would consider to be a demon was a ghost, a mutated ghost. Um, that's where I lead towards. Uh, so when we're dealing with ghosts, we're dealing with little spirits, L-I-L, right? And so Can the earliest that reference- for people who don't understand it? Yes, so a little spirit is a species of spirit. So uh, chronologically speaking, we have various manifestations of these entities throughout, uh, throughout history and cultures, but it's always in, in comparative literature, so it's always an entity that's disincarnate. And so our early, earliest reference is a, is a Phoenician text. And this is where it's fascinating, dude, you're going to love this. It's where we get Ruach in Hebrew, breath, wind, spirit. It's all throughout the Levant. But the idea was that when a person dies, the disincarnate entity that, that, that moves out of the body, it becomes a little spirit. It's a ghost. It's a wind. It's a breath. It's an air. Mm -hmm. And so, so that became a little spirit. So what happened is the earliest demonologists begin to characterize these entities in terms of not just status, but species and substance. And so every little spirit has the same substance, but they're not all on the same status. Okay. And so Lil turns into, okay, first of all, it's disincarnate consciousness. This all originates in the Atreus epic, right? It's the same thing where Genesis one and one comes from where the blood of a God, right? Merges with the soul of God. And so what I've been teaching lately, I'm gonna teach it on uh, Rex Bear's uh, channel is that, you know, the ghost God, right right the, the the ghost of a man is made from the flesh of a god and so what our ancestors were trying to articulate is there is some hidden potentiality within humanity that when we die something has the potential to emerge out of us and become a lil now now the way our ancestors characterized the lil spirit was they would talk about inlil who's inlil well you wouldn't know who inlil was until you had a, a, a Phonetic rendering of a little spirit. That's a little, little, so, little spirit. Wow. What's up, dude? Yeah, man. And so all of this makes you talking sense. Sumer you're talking Sumerian. You're talking Anunnaki now. Oh, I got chills, bro. Let's see if you could show. Yeah, right. So now, now what we're realizing is there's a hidden potentiality within humanity to to, and this is why I call some of these entities molters. Well, we can molt our flesh and and evolve into something greater than who we are now. And so this is why uh, my, my big lecture coming up with Rex, it's not, whenever I feel like it, I'm going to put it out there. It's going to be called When Gods Were Men, right? Mm -hmm. And so what, I, what I'm thinking is, is this is heavy, dude. Um, but yeah, so, so that was the earliest demon. That was the Lil, the disincarnate consciousness, the wind, the breath, the spirit. And, and when that left, there were some who evolved into gods and then others who mutated into demons. I'm gonna throw what a scripture off that at you. Reaction? I'm sorry. What set off that reaction? How would one turn to what to, to one way or the other? Does it have to do with how you lived your life? That's that's the idea. That's the idea. That's ancient. I'm not. I don't know that yet. Um, yeah. You know, when we get into <laughs> to the Raphael document and ancient manuscripts, it's it's kind of it's kind of flaky on me. Right. Um, but what, what, one one thing is for sure, according to my research, is that yes, there are our answers typically there was a potentiality within all of us to either to ascend or to descend to evolve or devolve and and this is found in ancient manuscripts but one of the biggest like headlines of this of modernity because i know there are people that follow me because i was used to be a christian and everything um but yeah so so in deuteronomy yahweh is describing some of these beings that are right they're doing the same thing in modern ufo abduction phenomena they're coming down and they're saying hey listen we want you to do all this and so yahweh punches them right in the face and says you you sacrifice the demons who were not gods see how he makes a distinction mm -hmm. to gods wait a minute right wait a minute so he's like he's to gods who recently showed up so so what we're dealing with again is the ancient definition of a demon was this kind of consciousness mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll shut up i know i'm rambling man but i think that's where i'm at my research Mm -hmm. But um, we've got, especially demonology, we've got to get our head out of our ass and figure this out. Okay. Now you know I'm, you know I'm rambling, bro. Now you know. No, it's all good. Um, so I guess <laughs> the, question, the question would be, 
Um, we know we have, so you have three dimensions. You have length, width, and height, okay? But you also have three dimensions in the, um, in the world. You have plants, that's the first dimension. You have animals, that's the second. Humans are the third, okay? The idea is to learn life lessons, love, realize that you are God, realize that everything is God because nothing's outside of that, and then you basically ascend, okay? If you don't learn these lessons, then you reincarnate. That's almost kind of a punishment. Where, what would you say if you don't learn the lessons and you have to reincarnate, that's one way to go. But if you don't reincarnate, you can also become a demon. So can you like- Liminal. Some... Okay. Liminal in between two worlds. This is where, uh, this is fascinating. This is where our ancestors begin to demonize some and divinize others, right? We're seeing the pathology of human evolution here. Uh, so, so originally the idea was that our ghosts were hungry ghosts. They never, they didn't get food, so they started death, right? You know, all this stuff. Um, even Lamashtu, she was de determined to have been a, a, a demon or really a ghost, this is fascinating too, that would uh, take babies from the womb. Hello, UFO abduction phenomenon. And the reason she do that is because she was barren in life. Well, if that's supposed to be a divine being, she had a lifetime, she was barren, right? And so, so all of this, again, all of this points to the idea that um, for whatever reason, there were some beings, some people that mutated in their pathology and they became worse, per, worse people than they ever been in their life. There are case studies of that. In the 17th century, this is a case study that I can rarely talk about. Thank you for allowing me this, this opportunity. Yeah. Um, in the 17th century, there was a young boy. Sometimes in my interviews, I say, hey, it was a, a, you know, an older boy. It's not. No, it was an 11-year-old boy who was picking apples with his dad in the orchard. His dad says, I'm going to go over there, you know, do your job, whatever. I'll meet, meet you up for lunch, whatever. Um, he picks an apple. The son does. Next thing he knows, something inhabits his body. He's possessed. This is the Kabbalistic text. He goes to the exorcist, and the exorcist is entertaining. And not entertaining, but um, uh, just talking to this entity that's possessing this boy. Who are you? What are you? The entity says, my name is so-and-so. I am a pedophile. I committed this first act under that, that tree when I was alive. This is incredible, incredible. And so the exorcist is going, oh my God, this is new data. What do you mean? Like, what are you doing? Where are you at? What dimension are you at, right? All these questions that you and I would both ask. Well, he's like, I'm dead, I'm dead. He's like, but I stalk my crime scenes. Again, I have to ask, are we talking extra dimension or are we talking I think, dimension? Well, I think a dimensional question is, is a good question, but I, I liken these beings to, to, to literally, okay, when, when they were embodied, they died. So all, all their knowledge when they were embodied, you know, they consumed. And then it's almost like when they walk out of a room mm -hmm. and then walk back into it. Gotcha. Right. When they die, they learned everything in the afterlife. And then now they're back again seeing, okay, this is what matters to me. Gotcha. It's very interesting. Um, I think again, that a lot of these entities that are abducting people have the same pathology, the same sexual pathology in all of it. Um, but we're being restricted, Michael, from religion and materialists. Anyways, I'll show you. you know, it, it's fascinating to me. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people that see when i talk about things like satan lucifer baphomet and all that i demystify all that okay and those are your stereotypical entities right, right. those that that we have now okay and i demystify that with astrology and just with with history with it mm -hmm. there are some people that actually believe that these so-called demons that people mm -hmm. talk about are Jungian, maybe not Jungian, maybe not Carl Jungian, but they're archetypes in the lower self. What's your thoughts right. on that? No, not at, not at all, not at all, not at all. That's an ancient thought um, that was demystified by your earliest demonologists. When you get into this, there's a book that I was going to, uh, it's, it's underneath this. Yeah, plug shelf, all the books but... that you want people to read. <laughs> the people that I listen will. to me read. Well, um, it's called Eros and Evil. It's by Ariel Masters. It talks about the sexual pathology of demons and how a lot of people, I'm talking entire religions, Catholic, Catholicism, 
name it. Um, they would blame the victim. Uh, for instance, you'd have a woman go to bed, she would get assaulted by an entity, and they would say, well, you just, you know, I won't say it, but, you know, it was a dream, and, you know, you, you and your husband weren't doing good, whatever, and so, you, you know, you imagine this, and you, you mm-hmm. wanted to do it, and you're blaming what you did with this other guy on a demon, and that's been occurring for, for millennia, mm-hmm. um, but that's not true, and I think that uh, it's not a tulpa, it's not a, um, an egregore. It's something different. It's something different that, that uh, at least in my case studies, will pluck a memory out of your mind and step in, into the role itself. That's why a lot of these people in antiquity were saying, of course it looked like your boyfriend, because it was, yeah. right? But it wasn't, right? Um, right? I always and tell so- people, I always tell people, when I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I always tell Go people ahead. when we, um, when I, when I talk about this kind of stuff that the reason that so many people see Jesus when they're having near death experiences or whatever is because entities come to you in familiar faces to, 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 to relax you, whether they're benevolent or whether they're good, right. They come to you as familiar faces so that it calms you, right? A demon's not just going to show up with 12 heads, right? It's going to show up as uh, your ex-boyfriend that died in the car crash or something. Correct. And, Dude, I'll, I'll, yeah, you're right. Uh, and so that's what I'm dealing with right now, especially in the ufology field. You know, people are like, oh, my God, it's the white lady. It has to be Mother Mary. And I'm thinking in history, well, you know, Mother Mary, it's, just, it's all backwards. Um, you know, so, so you're right. Uh, I had a case in India where a girl was being haunted by an entity that was trying to self-replicate through her, right? Impregnate her, take the child and all that stuff. Uh, but it appeared to her in the image of every man she's been with. So what this does is for us, the, the modernity is we look back to these ancient manuscripts, we're like, of course, people would misunderstand that, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, it is your, of course, it is your husband, right? Of course, you. No, what's really occurring is that that we're being, they're, they're running a program on us, and and unfortunately, demonology has fallen short of understanding them. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a lot of experts out there doing shows and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And it pisses me off because I'm a demonologist, right? It, it, it's just, anyways, my bad. I, I get worked up, man, you know, because my field is lacking. It's lacking right. tremendously right now. Right. Um, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll start to get into some of the other stuff too, but okay. um, as far as movies like Stigmata or Conjuring or Insidious, um give me some um positives and things that you that you think are misinterpreted um are they accurate is what i'm asking well i think the majority of it is misinterpreted okay. you, you see uh what's happening is, is the makers the even the writers from which these producers get the story they're not up to date with the research Mm-hmm. Uh, right now I'm working, not I'm working with, I'm friends with a demonologist who's been studied by the Vatican, been studied, um, with a lot of people. I won't mention them. I'll talk to you off air, off air rather. Um, but, um, what happened was our government was studying the stigmata, right? Where, where was it? And this is unbelievable. So what happened was in ancient paintings, it was the hands, right? And so we know that it's not sit. the hands. It was the wrists. Hold on. Because yes, if he was yes, yes. with his hands, he would have fallen I know. off. I know, I know, I know. This, you're going to love this. And so suddenly people started having stigma on their hands. This is brilliant. This is fascinating. And then, and then my friend goes, well, you know, I, she called me that day, like, like two, two or three months ago. And I knew she had been being studied by the world's number one religious scholar. And I, um, oh, I still forget her name. Anyways, uh, so, so Diana Ospasuka, that's her name. Anyways, and the reason she was being studied is because she was illiterate. She had no idea right? She's not, you know, whatever. She didn't realize that the stigmata was in the wrists. However, she had stigmata in the wrists. And so the Vatican was studying her because they're like, okay, once this is fascinating, once they realized, once the scholarship realized mm-hmm. that's not where it was at all, suddenly they, they, they started looking for the real thing. Mm-hmm. And the real thing had existed the entire time. And so I'm not saying, this is gets into some heavy stuff. So what you're basically saying very interesting. is that you're, you're basically saying it became like a social contagion almost. Hey, absolutely. If I believe it, I have it. 
and so this gets into the idea of, of interdimensional entities and I did whatever. Um, but but the dimension of consciousness, it's just like with uh, with with, with uh, Mariolatry, Satanists did not even articulate Mariolatric um, rituals until somebody believed Mary in Mariolatry. So Mary had to have been divine for them to have mocked her in their rituals. So it's almost it's almost like there's a parasitic species out there that's leaning on what are you willing to believe? And then once we believe in it, they start using that belief against us, mm-hmm. which is terrifying, terrifying. Now, you were, you were just speaking about a uh, demonologist in the Vatican and everything because we were talking yeah. about stigmata. Um, what, what do you know about the truth behind what happened to Padre Pio? I don't. I don't. I, I've heard things. I don't know exactly what happened. Malachi Martin has his own opinion. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I've heard things. I appreciate like you. your honesty. No, that makes that makes the show go by much better. Um, so let's talk about. Um, I'm trying to figure out which one's earlier, but let's start with this one. Let's talk about Lilith. Okay, Adam's original wife. Okay. Yeah. Now, for people who don't know who Lilith is, Adam had a wife before Eve. Okay. Mm-hmm. This has been a fascinating study by a lot of people, and the reason that she's not well known is because she refused to submit to Adam like God asked. What she did was she did not lie down in the missionary position, thus submitting to Adam. She was kicked out, but then somehow she became a demon. Can you, and they, they kind of, they romanticized it in true blood, the show. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering, can you link that for me, how she went from Adam's wife and then basically what happened to her or what you know about it? Well, Hebrew mythologists, you have to understand the, the Hebrews were a migratory people. They migrated. And as they were migrating, they would incorporate comparative literature, comparative demonology, and right. comparative mythology. You know, that secretism, right? Mm-hmm. And so as they evolved and migrated, so also did their demonology. And so again, the Phoenician text was a little spirit. Little spirit was wind, breath. What they call it ruach in Hebrew. Right. Even the Holy Ghost, which is also consciousness, by the way. Right. Um, so yeah, it, evo- it it left the body, and now the idea was that it wanted to possess a body that looked like its own image. And so, as it evolved, you Hebrew mythologists uh, they incorporated that into their own theories of why it is that there is an entity out there that appears to men in the image of women and steals their seed. We would call that a succubus. Yes. Right? Well, we wouldn't. The ancients would, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I would call it my ex. Um, (laughs) (laughs) God, help us. Um, So how did Lilith become become this demon? Lilith became the demon because what was happening is the same thing as in modernity they would seduce a man and they would harvest the seed. And so with the Hebrews, what they'll always do is they'll they'll tell you, listen, I don't want this to happen. And so I'm going to build guardrails around it, right? Matter of fact, I don't want her to steal your seed, so don't masturbate. Does it make sense? Yeah. Right. And so- They talk about it in the Bible, the story of Onan. He he pulled out and came on the floor and God killed him. Right. And to this day, Catholics and Christians don't pull out. That's why they have such large families, because they read the story of Onan, and he was supposed to impregnate his brother's wife to keep his offspring, right? which he didn't do. He pulled out, and then God saw it, got disgusted, and killed him. Right, right. The, the idea, though, is it's the preservation of our seed, because there was a species of spirit, again, succubi and all that, Lilith. Um, see, Lilith was Lilith. Prior to Lilith, it was Lilith. So, again, it's the phonetic rendering as it evolved. Now, uh, with the Lilith, Lilith, there was a Lilu, which was the male counterpart, incubi, succubi, the male counterpart to that entity. Now, what I'm looking at here are programs. I don't believe these are actual people. Mm-hmm. I believe that our ancestors interpreted them according to their awareness of history and what they're experiencing. But um, so, so it's a program that they're working on. So there are still Liliths occurring to this day. Just like with Betty and Barney Hill. He was abducted, lady appeared to him, took his seed. Yeah. Right? 
if I was an ancient man or woman, I'd say, dude, that guy just kind of, you know, whatever. So, so yeah, so I say, I think these are all programs, but I think if anything, this shows us how the phenomenon is evolving according to our awareness of it. Right. So different names, that's fine. But the same pathology, this is where Ariel Masters comes in. The same sexual pathology has been there. And so that's how that, that being became a demon. Okay. So my next, just a little pause for a yeah. second yeah. for the people listening and who will listen the word church. And I learned this from Jordan Maxwell, my friend and mentor, rest in peace. Okay. You always have to give your roses, Nate. If I could give you one thing, always hand out your roses. Um, mm -hmm. Jordan Maxwell, the word church goes back to an old English word, Kirk, mm -hmm. which goes back to the Romans, which is Saris, mm -hmm. which goes back to the Greek, which is Circes, or I might've gotten that last part confused. Circes was a woman who let men into her house and people into her house and she would basically eat them, okay? That's what she would do. That's your word church, okay? That's what it means when you trace it all the way back. So we talked about Lilith. Uh, hold on. We talked about Lilith, but now I want to talk about uh, Samael. Mm -hmm. Okay, Samael, for people who don't know, is the angelic name of, does it even matter, Satan, Lucifer? I mean, I break them really down matter. in a different, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when we're talking about To this. me, to me, right. though, to me. Right, 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 right. So Samael was his angelic name, mm -hmm. okay? So talk a little bit about Satan, how that evolved. Uh, well, Satan was a species. Again, I can't harp on this enough. I know it's it's going to sound like I'm repeating myself. No, 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 but it's fine. I'm learning this too. It's a species of spirit. Um, you know, it took it took Catholicism until the 16th century to figure out if Satan even existed. Right? Killed a shit ton of people. Is Satan real? That's what they're talking about. Is Satan even an agent? You know, and and that's what occurred. Uh, according to even mythology, it pri like existed prior to to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. The the oldest text, at least in Hebrew literature that I found, was uh, like I said, Psalms one hundred nine six, where they employ before Satan became Satan, it was it was slipped out in the consciousness of the author, and uh, this is David talking about a guy who was hating on him and stuff. He says, "Oh, you know." Go use a dead man to possess this man. By the way, that's not a demon, right? That's a ghost, right? He used the Hebrew word Russia. And then he said, uh, and also place a Hasatan, a Satan, on his right side. And the defini definition was an accuser. Same thing in the book of Job. He's an accuser. And he's right. an accuser, Hashatan. right? Yeah, this guy over here, you got to look at him, right? Look at him. Um, and so that that was the idea. It wasn't until at least the first century that people started to kind of imagine Satan as different. I mean, I can get to Lucifer too. Lucifer, again, in my in my research, and I know there are, again there, there's a lot of people that will say, "Well, I don't believe that." And that's fine. Um, but he was one of these divinized kings. You know, you've done this kind of research where we get into priest kings and king priest and Melchizedek and all of this, this yeah. kind of bloodline of the, the same ideology, different religions, but they syncretized comparative theologies into their own right. and then looked back like the Hebrews did and said, you guys are all idiots. We, we've got it now. Does that make, you understand what I'm yes. saying? And so it's not can, true. You, can you explain the Moravian bloodline? Is that no. what these people are trying to predict? I mean, protect. I think they're trying to preserve, preserve and protect. Pre yes, protect. Now, this this Moravian bloodline is it's problematic for me because I think it's a legend a little bit, just like angels and all that shit stuff. Sorry, stuff. Um, but I do believe that there are there is a self replicating bloodline that's wanting to preserve the priest king nature. Um, mm -hmm. Just like this is fascinating too. When you get into Egyptology, the Book of the Dead. There's, uh, there's what's called the image of the invisible. What is that? Why is it mentioned in the Bible? How, how, what is the image? Of, and so we get into, okay, the, the oneness of Yahweh or Yeshua, right? Uh, when you look at me, you've seen the Father. I am the image of 
that which is mm -hmm. invisible. And so all of these references are ancient, but again, it all points back to this hidden potentiality within humanity that we, by virtue of consciousness and by evolution of our consciousness, we could become something that we've never even imagined, Micah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever heard of the book Revolt of the Angels by Anatoly France? I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I've read I've it. I've never bought it, though. What do you think okay. about it? Read it. Um, it's a story written in the 1800s. Okay. It, it was actually banned by the Catholic Church because it was. It's called I'm going to read it now. It's called, it now. it's called The Revolt of the Angels yeah. because it's Lucifer leading a third of the angels against right. God, being sent right. down to earth and then waging war on him again. It's from the right. point of Lucifer. And it's yeah, yeah. very fascinating. It is highly banned from the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. and it's not easy to find. Uh, I think you can get it on Amazon, so maybe it is easy to find. But basically, yeah. it's it's a, it's a an incredible book. So there's been a lot of talk on this. So yeah. let me ask you a question. How far back, like, is there... Uh, I know you're talking about these, these groups, right? And it seems like... It seems like what, what I talk about in astrotheology, whether you go from 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 the Greeks or or, or or the Lascaux Caves, and then you continue to go to the Greeks and the Romans and then the Jews and then the Christians and the Muslims, it's all retelling the same story, you know? So right. that's what basically demonology sounds like it is, too. So can you trace it back? How far back can you go? Late Iron Age, Ugaritic texts. Ugaritic texts, at least the term demon angel was uh, Malakuma in Ugaritic texts, and that became Malakim in Hebrew. Um, but again, I'm telling you, even in ritual That's interesting because Malak in Hebrew means king. Right. Dude, let's go, baby. Let's go. High five. <laughs> high five. High five. Oh, come on, dude. It's there. It's there, right? And so these these terms are being employed. Again, there's one of my favorite authors. He wasn't an author, but he was uh, – he had a master's degree from Harvard Divinity, and he was a he was the earliest – the youngest bishop in the Western Indian Church. He's basically Catholic, but my God, he's a beast. Um, anyways, he said that these scriptures were written to them, but they were written for us. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what the, what, what that means is, what that means is there is a stream of consciousness, Micah. Oh my God, dude. That is, is speaking to us throughout generations of trauma and consciousness and doctrines. And they're pulling us. Uh, we know that literally now, because we can mm -hmm. literally prove and, and 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 fringe science is proving this right now. Modern day cutting edge science is proving mm -hmm. that trauma can be literally passed down through DNA. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. not only that, but there are people. If you were to do what's called generational work, okay, there, there's 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 yeah. some people that do generational work. What they do is they heal unfinished trauma from your past right. bloodline so that it no longer affects you. Which, in a sense, I guess you could call an exorcism in a way. Ooh, memory and motion, right? Yeah. Memory and motion, the possession. But whose memory is it? That's Fair where enough. you're headed to. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, man, beautiful thought. Uh, you know, but that's what I've learned in my research, man, is, it, you know, it took me a lot to get out of it because I was so, I grew up in such dogmatism. Yeah, me too. Where it's like, dude, I got to get, it, it was so stuffy. And it was congested and I wasn't allowed to be a free thinker. And I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to be blasphemous. I just wanted to think differently because I was already a different thinker. Um, you know how it is. Do you think uh, modern day demonology has kind of been dumbed down or shielded from the masses? Was it openly talked about back in the day? Oh, it was, but what we have now are cosplayers i'm not lying I'm, i swear to god go to paracon and he'll they'll don a priestly collar and and the, the the literature they have knowledge of is about this this much my god it pisses me off personally because i'm a purist right so are you right i want the data give me all that research i don't care what it means you know that's, that's kind of it that's how i am uh but they don't care a lot of these people don't and so, you know, a lot of shows I do have to dumb it down because a lot of people have been trained by what they've seen on television mm -hmm. or what they've seen at Paracons. If I'll tell you what, the demon will leave if I pray these certain prayers. And Micah, it's not it's not true, brother. 
they're so much more sophisticated. They're more developed and evolved than us. They have their own pathology, sexual pathology, belief system. Memory. But what about something like uh, La Rouge Grimoire or the Dragon's Grimoire? What about things like that? I don't, I'll be honest. I What I've come to is that certain things work for certain men for certain reasons. Okay. It doesn't mean it'll work all the time. Father Sinner Stravamino is a Franciscan priest. And uh, he, he had done all kinds of stuff. He was one of my heroes in incubi research. He was pulling the eyelids back of incubi victims and finding how these beings were carving symbols underneath them. You won't hear that, right? No, right? It, it's, but yeah, so, uh, but what's happening, he, even Sinistrari was on a dirt road one day and uh, he encountered an entity and manifested in front of him. It's like a coyote when you're out hunting. He didn't give a crap who he was, just walked by him. He looks over and he's like, hey, listen, this is not human, there's something wrong with this thing. And he pulled out all of his amulets and the entity laughed at him. This, this is a problem, brother. It's a problem for demonology, you know, the, because, you know, he said, okay, well, why is it all, why, why I, I prayed for you. I did the, the holy water. I did all of my amulets. And then he asked the entity, why is it not working? And then he just said, I don't believe in it, man. Deuces. And so that what's, what's fascinating, you want to talk about a, you want to talk about a, a, a dichotomy, a paradox. Uh, Sinistraria labeled that demon a pagan demon, as if paganism has a demon, right? It's 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 so jacked I up. Feel like, I all... feel like when it comes to pagans, they catch the rap for everything. Yeah. They do. They do. Um, so let me ask you a question randomly. Then let's 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 move on to this. How about um, give me your information on vampires, like? What, what 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 you know about that? Okay, so so the, the earliest vampires we know of were um, going to graveyards after the recently deceased, and they were not milking blood; they were milking the carcasses of the deceased. This is some jacked up shit. I'm not gonna lie; I cannot say this on any other show. But thank you for the opportunity. They were haunting, literally waiting in the darkness for someone to be buried and they would go find the shallowest grave and then they would, this is, this is nuts, but they through the virtue of necromancy. They would revive that body by putting a spirit in it to where they would induce an orgasm and they would yeah. take the semen. This is where succubi come from. Well, they this used where... to do this. I think it was the ancient Egyptians. Um, yep. We, uh, there were, there were, and, and it's escaping me right now. And I hate not having all the information for people who listen to me. For people who are listening, by the way, I have no notes. I never have any notes when I do interviews. Okay, this is just all right. off the top. This is just us talking. Um, the Egyptians used to wait for the women to decompose a right. little bit. Whereas the men, not so much. But the women, yes, because they were afraid of necrophilia. Okay? Necrophilia? And in fact, on top of which, we know that there were cultures that used to eat the deceased. Mm -hmm. so there's that too. We're, we're, dude, you're all over it, man. That was the origin of the vampire the mythology. So, so again, what I've been doing lately, and I'm fascinated by this too, is the funerary rites in antiquity. How they evolved. How they evolved, mm -hmm. right? Who were the Watchers? Who were the Nephilim? Who were the Rephaim? Who were, who were these entities we would call vampires, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that would go and, and, and revive the dead just to harvest the excretions from it? Mm -hmm. Now, what's so fascinating is and when you get into real witchcraft, real authentic witchcraft they did the same thing and they used it and consumed it if i dare say and in consuming it they would reach another dimension they would meet these entities that are abducting people i think alistair crowley used to do that too and he, he did all that shit he was bisexual he did all yeah. that shit. yeah he used to do that too i remember that yeah um, so what this we is why i tell people i tell people i'm not coming from a religious standpoint when i say this i'm telling people mm -hmm. literally if you stop masturbating if you mm -hmm. stop that you're going to go through that period of time where you're just very agitated and horny, like you're quitting smoking or something. But eventually, your chrism will start to rise, and you're you're you will still have a libido, but you can turn it on and off. Okay, right. That's how the right. sacred. When when we talk about the Bible being anatomical and everything, you've got the thirty three bones in your spine. You've got Jacob's ladder. You have the Christ, the chrism that climbs up it. Okay, the cerebral spinal fluid goes all the way up goes to the place of Golgotha, 
where Jesus was crucified. Golgotha means skull. Place of the skull. Place yeah. of the skull. Well, what's the place of the skull? It's the two hemispheres of the brain. What's in the middle of the two hemispheres of the brain? The pineal gland. Mm -hmm. So it's all right there. Okay. So by 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 siphoning out their life energy, it's this could, yeah. it's, it's yeah. probably the most degrading thing you could do to someone. <laughs> right. You'd think so, right? Does that make sense? I believe one hundred percent. Dude, when I when I grew up, okay, and this is something that I, I rarely talk about because I'll be honest with you, I get shit on on shows, bro. Whenever I mention where I grew up and how I grew up, and what I believe in terms of my spirituality, mm -hmm. you know, the comments get lit up, and it's like, you know, that old day he looks like, you know, uh, you know, Bobcat Goldway and all that shit. I get it, I love it. I'm just saying it. But there's there's such a rare part of me that I, I rarely talk about. And I just I know I'm rambling now, but. I, uh, so when I was growing up in Pentecostalism, dude, I, I met people who would traverse and, and show up at church, and these guys were what our ancestors would call an exorcist. And there's such an energy about them. They're not um, they're not somebody you see on TV. They're completely different. It's really strange energy, Michael. Um, when I was around them, like it was it was weird. Your skin would crawl. The hair on the back of your neck would stand up. And it would be an energy about them where at any point, this is what's crazy, at any point you could, you, you felt like they could just look at you and read your whole life, see through your life, see through your soul. And, but it was their nature to do that. There was a guy named Jonathan Suber. Um, he would, he would, he, he was a white guy that grew up in Africa as a missionary kid. But what he would do, and it was how he was trained to do it, he would go and separate himself from culture. And he would pray and fast for months. Then he would come back and do deliverance ministry. And and we talk about mysticism. I was watching an interview with Truth Seeker, yeah. our pal, man. Love him, dude. Um, and he was talking about mysticism and esotericism. Yes, that's a very esoteric version, right, of what we're dealing with. But these exorcists had such a, a, a connection, and I'm going to use this, with God consciousness. God consciousness, dude. And I've noticed this about you know this you a could lot. also call you could also call I'm gonna let you yeah. finish but you can also call what I call God is everything okay you could also yeah. call the Akashic records it's every thought every every action every word right it's all in one ethereal book so they could right. have been like Edgar Casey touched it um, you know when he right. would do his readings and such but yeah no you're talking about the Akashic records basically dude and these guys were like. And I, you know, I grew up in UPCI, very strict sect, not even a sect, it's like a cult, it's not. But when I tell you, like, this dude, super, um, he was just different. I mean, documenting miracles. I mean, like, like, like people in a cracker barrel, like just, and, but whenever I was around him, this is how I started with my, my calling and what I'm doing now. This is why I'm on your show or your, your podcast. Um, <laughs> it's right. not a podcast, yeah. you're fired. It, no, all right, all right, I know. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I'll go back to the green room. No, um, but whenever I was around him, dude, there was such a power, a resident, and we used to call it unction. But but again, he was so pure, where he disassociated himself from everything, and then it was almost as if, and here's my philosophy, he went outward and inward at the same time, right? He's not here, he's he's there. And so I think that's the most beautiful aspect of it. But again, the steroidal field must have been like a nuclear reactor. Yes, dude, he was freaking unbelievable. He had a he, he preached at a church, and I'm telling you, dude, I've documented this. This is factual. Okay, he was preaching at a church in Louisiana, and again, he's from Africa, so he learned all of the spiritual warfare from Africans in right. Africa. Yeah. So he was explosive, dude. He was he was at a church. He was on a the platform. They're having what they call song service. This is all right, man. I'm gonna tell you about my history, bro. This is this is crazy. So he's on a, he's at a church, man. They're having a song service, and he keeps patting this preacher on the back. The pastor says, "Look, man, somebody's gonna get healed right now. God's telling me I want to. He's gonna heal right now." The pastor's ignoring him. Finally, he just walks up, grabs the microphone, and he says, "God wants to heal somebody right now." There was a deaf lady in the back of the crowd. Soon as you were, you were she, there, I was not there, but I know a friend who was. How about okay. That? Yes. And um, yeah, and so the deaf lady, she said, as soon as she, she's deaf, but there was a, some, I don't, I don't know how it is, a chemical reaction? I don't know, right? I don't know. But her ear opened up 
and she heard Jonathan Super talking the microphone. So that's what I grew up with. And that's why I believe, and that we were talking about this before the show, uh, that what I grew up in, if it was outside of what I grew up in, they would call these people pagan, right? Because they they're using the same gifts. That's the go-to word. That's the go-to They'll word. They'll demonize it. Yeah, I try to make it, you know, make sense. Yeah. 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 They're all pagan, dude. And they're not. They're not. And uh, this is why I have a book with me. And God help us, brother. It's called The Witch's Anointment or Witch's Ointment. This is a, uh, a protege of Graham Hancock. Thomas Hatzis. Thomas Hatzis. Yeah. Witch's Ointment. Hold on. Yeah. So this gives you insight into the traditions of the church and how they bastardized. Hold on, this is going, dude, this, this blew my mind. How they bastardized ancient esotericism and said, well, listen, if you don't do it our way, not even, watch this, not even the rituals, just the belief. These rituals work. Yeah. But what they were saying is, if you don't believe what I believe, I don't care if you have results. You know, and there's so, a lot of, there's a lot of so thoughts that the, um, I talk about this, that before, 325 AD when Constantine united either he he was baptized on his deathbed or he united everyone in Christianity literally well, whatever before then yeah. the earliest Christians were known as heliognostics and that's great that's helios for the sun and gnosis means knowing so they were sun knowers they were sun worshipers there's a lot of talk about the early early Christians okay yeah. with their texts and that some of these rituals and some of these prayers are supposed to be done on psychedelics is that why it's called the psychedelic? Uh, does uh, it get yes. into that at all? Dude, it gets into everything, man. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll either buy it or I'll send it to you, Micah. I swear to God, I'll send it to you. Um, I've only, I read the rest of it, but I only like, when it started getting real heavy, I stopped underlining things because I'm ADHD, so I underline everything. Once it started getting heavy, I started screenshotting it, and then, you know, later on, but this is huge. But what it, what I realized was that uh, there are people that I've met that are just like Jonathan Super. You know, they have the same gifting, but they but people like him were being persecuted by the church mm -hmm. because they did not fit in the blueprint of the present dogma. Right. And I hate that shit. I grew up in it. You know, and so so I guess that's what I'm trying to bring to my field is look, you know, like even even if I have to bridge the gap between what I, what I grew up in and what I'm dealing with now, uh, it's just, it's so dogmatic. And I'm finding that both in ufology and demonology now. If you're not Catholic, you're not a demonologist. Wow. That's what I'm being told. So while we're still talking about psychedelics, okay? Yeah. Um, yes. Are you are you familiar in them? I'm not asking if you've done them, but are you familiar in the, the, uh, the whole culture? Um, I'm familiar with the research. I had let me ask you. Let me ask you a more direct question because that was kind of yeah. uh, that was silly. Uh, forgive me again. No notes. Um, DMT, the mechanical yeah. elves. You heard of them? Yes. Um, what are they that you think or that you might know of? Are they? Um, are they? Are they demons? Are they entities? Are they? Are they? I don't have them. Look with me. Uh, actually, I do. Well, the cover fell off again. It's, I've read this shit forever. Um, oh my God, this is Eros and Evil by Ariel Masters. And I do take care of my books, but buy it because he, call, he, he talks about the Drake Apothec, which we, we get Apothecary, right? Uh, and he talks about even also um, a problem the Mage, which uh, oh, Crowley got his stuff from, mm -hmm. also a Life is Levi. What they talk about is, is let me go back. Go, let's go to, uh, to Brahman the Mage. Brahman the Mage, he met a lady who said, I can leave my body at any time. He said, all right. She goes, yes. She goes, I can leave my body and I can fly. And when I do, you'll see me fly. And he goes, okay. So she Give goes, me a time I frame on this. Well, I don't know, dude. Honestly, I don't know. I think it was maybe about 14th century. Okay, I was going to say, because you mentioned Eli, Eli, Lephus Levi. That's the late it's 1800s. After. Crowley was like yeah. the late, mid, or early 1900s. So, right. okay, so you're talking like 15th century. Dude, at least. At the, or at the most. At the most. All right. Um, yeah, so so uh, it's called <clears throat> the, the Book of the Sacred Magic of a Problem the Mage. 
Now, now we're gonna we're gonna. You said we'll do an hour according to the yeah. We're killing this shit, dude. <laughs> we'll keep um, going. I have a couple questions left too. But keep, right, no, keep going, no, so. no. I mean, I mean, like this is great, dude. The flow yeah. is amazing. At least, yeah, dude. So Brum the Mage. So Brum the Mage, according to his, this is fascinating. His base nature, he says, none of this magic can work unless the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That was his basis. None of it should work. Hold on. But it did. And so he traveled throughout the world, met a lady who did all this. I could be on a body and you could see me fly and everything. And she goes, he goes, oh, well, I'm going to fly too. So she gives him, drink a puffet, right? She gives him what Terrence McKenna, right? DMT, the method tripling, all this stuff. And so he meets these beings and he, he swears to God they're real. And then he, and I, I forgive this term, but he sobers up, whatever, whatever. He comes back to the world, yeah. whatever. And, and he goes, well, well, I want you to take it. And I want to see, you know, if you're leaving your body, if you're, you're, if you're literally flying. And she took it and she said, didn't you see me fly? And he said, no, I was right here. You were right here. Mm -hmm. Now what we're dealing with again, and this gets even deeper than for the show, we're dealing with at least the idea that if we take medications that our soul can leave the body. And so what I interpret that as is she was out of body thinking she was flying in her body. Makes sense. So this is, a, this is an awesome issue we deal with UFO abduction phenomenon. They'll believe they're abducted bodily until they become physical again. Mm -hmm. so, so I believe that at least some of these entities are using the apothecary to trigger experiences, mm -hmm. almost like a bridge. Wow. So to answer your question, uh, this gets back into consciousness as the mm -hmm. bridge of, of where they can manipulate us in our, in our reality. Um, so yeah, that, that would be my perception of it. So this is why I believe many abductees are given drugs, given the what's called the adrenocorpothic, which, by the way, and this ties into something that I don't even I'll never do a show on because it's too dark. But the witches came up with drinkopothic potions, and ninety nine percent of them were excretions from the body. What are these entities pulling from us? Wow. <clears throat> I was going to make a small video on this at some point. I still might. But since we're talking about psychedelics, I've got supporters that hate that I smoke, but it's really like one of my only vices. So I'll quit one day. I'm also French, so I'll probably live forever with these. But mm -hmm. um, psychedelics, okay? I want to throw this out to everyone listening. If you're thinking of trying to do this, if you are on antidepressants, Okay. Do not do psychedelics. Do not do DMT. Do not do toad. Do not do mushrooms. Okay. Mushrooms on, on uh, antidepressants will cause seizures. Okay. DMT and um, Bufo, as it's called, ayahuasca, things of that nature, if you're on antidepressants. First of all, the antidepressants are already working on your brain. Okay, they're already doing things like I, I did a video on SSRIs and, and I, I broke it down on what a serotonin reuptake mm -hmm. inhibitor actually does. And I, I kind of uh, I illustrated it. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, even if you try to do it, it'll these, these SSRIs will block your brain from doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, do not do them. Okay. And then a lot of people, if you're on them, okay, and I'm of the body and mind. That there is, this is why I hate politics, because there is not one right answer for everything, okay? The SSRIs are good for some people, and they're fucking terrible for other people. Some people just need exercise, go out in the sun, tan their buttholes, whatever. Do you know what I mean? They could just do that kind of stuff. Or but, bleach it. Or bleach it, yeah. But when it comes <laughs> Sorry, dude. Joke. It's okay. So I'm just trying to say is that if you're on SSRIs... What they'll try and tell you if you're ever interested in doing these kind of things is they'll tell you to get off them for like a week. Do not do that. If you are on them, stay on the medication. Okay. You can come very close to that experience. Okay. By understanding yourself and knowing how powerful you are and understanding all the stuff that I talk about and Nathaniel talks about too. You can, you can get to that level. Okay. If you're on it and you're thinking about doing it, do not do it. First of all, it might not even work. 
because your brain is already being worked on. Second of all, you have the chance of getting seizures and, and other kinds of health issues. Do not do this. Do not get off them. So that's my disclosure. I wanted to get, we talked about the mechanical elves. So let me ask you a question from your research. Who is the most conjured demon or entity in the world right now? And does it transcend over, I would say not cultures or countries or whatever. You know what I mean? How like we like French fries and the British eat shit. Like the uh, most. Like yeah. and chips and, and 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 in America everything is you know what I mean it's it's different. I don't mean the British are awful. I just mean their food. No, I'm gonna throw this out to you, but it's it's deeply philosophical. I hope you know where I'm coming from. The most conjured deity or demon is God. Oh wow. Okay. Because again, there's a re this is so fascinating. We, this gets into Akhenaten. Akhenaten trashed everything in Egyptology. He broke yeah. monotheism. There's one God. Fuck everybody else. There's one, one guy. Right. right. I wanna, I, right, right. And I'm telling you, get all this imagery out. Does it make sense? Right? Get it all out. Now, do we ever ever hear of a UFO abductee being abducted by Akunaten? No. No. You follow me? I yes. got chills, my friend. I got chills, brother. Do you ever hear of an abductee being abducted by Yahweh? Not happening. Because both of them said you will not. Right? I'll never have an image of me. So these beings, again, they don't know who to emulate because it's not in the humanity. It's not in the consciousness. Right. It's not in the literature. Now, Jesus is always conjured. Right? Oh, I believe in Jesus. Tap, tap, tap. Next thing you know, again, an entity will manifest as Jesus. Now, in my experience, especially not just in necromancy, not, I'm not a practitioner, but in case studies, necromancy, UFO abduction phenomenon, it's never the historical Jesus. It's not even an illiterate Jesus. It's a Jesus that fits the blueprint of the imagination of the experiencer. Correct. So what we're seeing is the entity will step into roles we allow them to by giving them an image by virtue of conjuring right. both us and Jesus at the same time. And right. thus it is, who do men say that I am? is what he said yep it's good stuff love it anyways that's my um, rambling brother no it's all right i've just got two more questions and we'll we'll basically see where it goes but yeah so i talk about quantum physics and i talk about string theory how 20 years ago that was like cutting edge that everything vibrates mm -hmm. and then i broke the, down the fact that if you read the quantum hermetica or you talk about hermes trismegistus or thoth that his uh, third principle is the principle of vibration. So 6,000 years later, we're figuring things out and patting ourselves on the back. Um, what <laughs> would you, and, and now cutting edge, cutting edge quantum physics says that the universe is conscious. Well, welcome to the fucking world, you know? Uh, right. What do you consider uh, cutting edge demonology or, or, or in your field? What's, the, what's cutting edge? Study, study of consciousness. <sighs> Studying, uh, well, the replication of life i would go into ancient funerary rites the white lady is not new to researchers it may be new to abductees um the white ladies were first god dude i'm getting pissed the white lady was very first witnessed by experiencers in antiquity only when they begin to bury brides in their wedding dresses then as an entity right as a conscious being manifest as a lady in white so we interpreted that as purity you know, it, it gets so deep, but in my research, we need to start looking at consciousness and, and how men can become gods, right? The ghost of a man is made from the flesh of a god. So there is a hybridization program going on, hello, ufology, but it's not what we think it is. You're a hybrid right now. I am too. Right. There's something mixture, right? There's a mixture going on, um, but I would trash. First of all, I'm going to back up and say this. <clears throat> All right. I'm a demonologist. Not that I identify as a demonologist. Okay. My very first show was, was coast to coast. And on the phone with the producer, she tried to figure out where to place me. I swear to God. And so when I went on coast to coast as a demonologist, I could not change that. Right? That's my avatar. I could not, like, they know me as that. Right. And so, so you're right. So when I get booked on shows, you know, demons, whatever. No, it's it's more expensive, just like your research is. We we don't have definitions yet. 
Right. Does that make sense? So, so when I say this about demonology, I don't say this because I, I, I believe it or I don't feed it to it. Demonology is an incomplete answer to an already incomplete question. Gotcha. You, that's where I'm at. So I would study consciousness. I would study ancient funerary rites. But with the idea that at any point, if my dogma matters to me more than the data, leave. Yep. The data is correct. correct. Not the dogma. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Beautiful. Um, do you think we could ever, I don't want to say read their thoughts, but do you think their could, thoughts? Yes. Can we ever understand a demon's intention ahead of time so we can prevent something? I'm making you work tonight. No, no, I, I can I see, you know how you, you're the same way as I am, man. You compartmentalize your research and you, you know, you place your experiences aside from them. Right. Um, and, and my experience with these entities in incubi and the succubi wants to impregnate. See, our ancestors used to compartmentalize like, the succubus and incubus are different entities. No, they're one, they're one entity. What they're doing, right, is they're going to a man and taking the seed and then going to a woman, same being, and placing it, or same programs, placing it in the womb. And in my experience, um, we can stop a lot of these beings by virtue of trauma. Uh, a lot of these, especially ufology, they'll create trauma by virtue of abduction and then they'll feed on it and use, and I put this in my book, Skin That Crawls, that they will they will create the bridge of trauma in women and walk through their wombs into time. So you're talking basically about, about Lush. You're talking about these entities that feed off of negative pain. That's, negative. that's a real thing. Oh shit. Yeah. Let me throw this, let me throw this at you. Okay. There's another theory. You, you realize, I mean, you do, I'm not, that's a hypothetical. Uh, you realize, uh, when when specific people when people in general they get into a position that their mind cannot possibly comprehend they make up stories how to deal with it yeah they fill in the blanks right they have to not, it's a defense mechanism it's evolutionary too right and so what happens is oh god help us you're you, you are making me work because now i'm, I'm going to share th some things with you guys i have never shown on show i'm just i'm rambling and i'm passionate um Yes, absolutely. So you have people, and this is what uh, Jen Sinivan says about Chris Bledsoe. All of the people in the government understand this. They're looking at timelines. When does a trauma stop and when does it begin? All that stuff. So uh, the data, at least UFO abduction and demonolog demonological texts, it suggests that when we experience these beings, we go into a state of post-traumatic stress syndrome, where it's, it's a, a fight or flight where we are so traumatized by either what we're seeing or experiencing that we literally when we're sober the next day or whatever we've got we have to fill in the blanks because our brain shut down and said i can no longer filter this kind of trauma you know when and you so see when you see do you have ever seen the movie the fourth kind mm -hmm. Okay, that's probably yeah. my favorite scary movie, let alone the whole UAP, oh, yeah. the whole UAP abduction thing. But that part where the demon is speaking to her in, 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 in Sumerian, yes. but she forgets it. That's what you're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this you're talking about. Like there's missing words and everything. Right. They showed the brain shutting down in that scene. It's just darker, dude. I can't some some some, some just, I cannot even articulate. The, the the depth of my research and how sometimes I have to shut it off and literally fly out of Dayton, Ohio for two, a month or two and just cancel my shows. You can ask Michelle. We have the same, right? We have the same publicist, I think. Yeah. Cancel it all. I'm done. I'm done. I can't, I can't, you know, uh, so that's what we're dealing with. And so I think a lot of this, again, when we're dealing with um, you know, the way we interpret the phenomenon, we also have to take into consideration how much our mind can process all at once. Right. Because that's what they showed in the movie. They, they right. the guys, girl, oh. women, see the fourth kind with Mila Jovovich, please. Oh, it's freaking right. amazing. If dude. you can handle it, see it. You'll see, and I'm not really spoiler alert, but these people are put 
in regressive hypnosis. And they recount the meeting and it is so traumatic that they have to be brought out of it because their conscious mind can't handle it. But we know that every trauma, everything is recorded in our subconscious. Uh, I think that case was um, one, it was actually a movie, obviously, but it was, it was made after a case from Dr. Carla Turner. Dr. Carla Turner was a UFO abductee experiencer and researcher. But what we're noticing now in the data is it's the same thing our ancestors did. They interpreted the trauma and the phenomenon the best way they could. And this is, you know, if it's a good angel, it's, if it's a good messenger, it's an angel. If, it's, if they hurt me, it's a demon. So now what we see in modernity is, hey, listen, you know, they, they could help us for a moment. Doesn't mean they didn't steal our kid. Right? So yeah. it's the same phenomenon that's masking itself. And what I'm doing now is um, in my research, I, dude, I always get asked this question. Is it I want to have you, I want to have you back on to talk about yeah. UAP, right, UFO, because right. to be right. fair, that's something I'm not really familiar with. That's I never fine. really got that's into fine. so. But I anyway, go on. It, Finish your thought. It's oh. fine. <clears throat> so is it alien or demon? Neither. Because yeah. because our understanding of demon is horns and hooves, right? That's why. But that's but God have mercy. That's why Nimrod would go and kill men in war. Where are the horns of divinity? Mm -hmm. Right? No, it's not horns and hooves. It's consciousness. But it's a consciousness that is manipulating our own evolution, that which we're not even aware of yet. It's pulling out of us to the point we have experiencers who have seen themselves in two places at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so let's, so let's get into the final question. Oh, um, I'm going to write about this in my ninth book, my ninth mm -hmm. and final book in the series. Mm -hmm. Um because there's nowhere else to go in the books. Um, but I was hoping that you could talk about Dyson and Die for a little yes. bit. And for people who don't know what it is, I'm going to let Nate explain. Okay, it's a die that our, our ancestors used. And it was designed to, to, they actually put it between their lenses. They would look through and they would see auras and hey halos, whatever you want to call it. And so the idea was you can interpret a person's spirit, interpret their mood, all of this stuff. Well, in modernity, a lot of the military industrial complex have kind of used that technology that was seen in Egyptology and many texts to see spirits. They have tried to apply that in their warfare. And a good friend of mine, which I, and I, I hate to do this because I know how boring it sounds. But just like out-of-body experiences, just like um, uh, remote viewing, there are military militaries in the world that have tried to take that and incorporate it in, in the battlefield. One of them was Russia. And one of my good friends, he bought up a, a lot of just retro, retrograde military night vision goggles from Russia. They, it's like 2002, 2004. Russia threw them. They were they were getting rid of their stuff. They threw it on eBay, and he took them. And so now, what he's been doing, and he's his research is niche. They won't have. He's he's incredible. But now, what he's doing is he's taking his goggles, and he's going into houses, and he's picking up orbs that these other researchers have no knowledge of. They have no knowledge of. They can't see it. Right. For people who people who aren't familiar, I'm going to jump in, then I'm going to let you jump back out. Yeah. They used to use this in Vietnam, okay? If you've ever yes. seen any okay. TV show, any video game that you've ever played, night vision is green. In Vietnam, the night vision was red because it was coated with this. And a lot of Vietnam vets got PTSD because they would see spirits flying around, okay? Now, you're not going to find this information or honest information on Google or on... Uh, What's that thing called? Um, Duck, duck, go. Okay, they're both compromised. Go to the, download the Brave browser. Okay, because for the time being, it's good. Do a deep research into Dyson and Die. Okay, I'm going to incorporate that into my ninth book. But 
what else do you um what else do you have about that well this is fascinating because it's not just auras or halos what he was doing is he would put on the goggles he would go into a house and he started using it to cleanse houses because he saw spirit not just spirit but orbs and so so his research evolved to having a medium this is weird stuff i got it but it's really interesting um but his story to me that that was most fascinating that applies to what we're talking about right now is he said that uh, he went in before one of the tv crews did the famous tv crews on television right whatever uh and he said he was there for 15 minutes gathered his data he walked outside and as they're finishing up inside he put the goggles on and he had a a laser thermometer this this see a lot of stuff jacks people up because it doesn't fit the narrative that tv pushes right he said so i'm looking through the goggles he said i look through a an alley there's a ball of light an orb that's floating and he said i see it and it's staring at me it's in the alley and he said so i took the thermometer he said i'm only seeing i couldn't see it he said i couldn't see it in my, my eyes when i put the goggles on i could see it he said so i shot it with a thermometer and he said when i did the laser refracted off of the orb so the orb was solid holy shit holy shit micah holy shit dude i'm telling you this guy's next level he said in one he said when i realized that i i what i was seeing and what and when i shot it he said that i could have seen it in my eyes i tried it i couldn't do it he said but when i shot it, it reflected light he said so orbs have the ability to come in and out of existence a lot of people do i have some i have some uh, people on my facebook that message me do you get this a lot because you're like uh an expert in one specific field people reach out to you about everything and they think Uh, everything about everything i had a lady that reached out to me and said that uh her stomach ground is it a demon no lie she was serious so yes yes i had a girl reach out to me and I, I, I think she's great too on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. She told me that she's she's following a guy who says that chakras are evil and he sells uh a chakra removing service. <laughs> That's a legit ghostbuster right there, brother. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, no. What the hell's that? What the shit is that? Yeah. So, but no, back to the, back to the point. I had some people reach out on Facebook and they sent me pictures. You ever see a picture of someone trying to take, take a picture of an orb? It just looks like, it looks like a 1990s picture. You can't tell anything. Yes. It's just, no. you know what it looks like? It looks like uh, when you get floaters in your eyes or something. Right. Or dust. That's why people say, dude, there's shows that are out there, like literally orbs or dust podcast. And it's like, all right, you know, <laughs> but you know, th- there are obviously people that misinterpret orbs for dust. But there, there's also literature as old as the 16th century where an exorcist is interrogating a ghost. You ready for this? And it says, if you could describe yourself, are you are you a chicken egg? What's it look like? Or are you an ostrich egg? Right? You follow me? You follow me? Right. What is he describing? God, I love this shit. What is he doing? He's saying, okay, how evolved are you as a ball of light? Right. It's beautiful, beautiful. Anyways, I'll shut up, man. I had a blast, by the way. So you're telling me it's blast. not like when like Demi Lovato goes ghost hunting and starts singing at a ghost? <sighs> but it's not like Katy Perry talking about sex with, with, with aliens. No. Right. It's not. It's not. It's completely different. And, um, oh, this is a whole other show, Mike. I swear to God. This gets back into guides, and we can't trust a lot of them. Oh, it's fine, man. We did 75 minutes. I'm th- thrilled with this. I'm going to put this up. Yeah. Nate, tell everyone where they can find you, follow you, get your stuff, reach yeah. out to you if they have questions, whatever. I'm very open uh, with my uh, listeners and my supporters. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it, man. I've really enjoyed myself. Uh, you can follow me on all of my social media. I got off Twitter because I think a lot of ufology sucks, and I don't want to debate them. They're just – I don't like it. I don't like people in general. I do, but not people like that. Uh, you know, experts that don't know anything. Um so, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm building my own YouTube channel. i got to be more dedicated to it. I, I do shows when I have inspiration, you know. Um, I have my own show on Leak Project, The Ghost Notes with Rex, every Thursday night at 9, uh, EST. And uh, that's, that's where I'm at, man. 
Yeah, Rex so. is giving me Rex is giving me one too. It's um, incredible, dude. What kind of platform, what, bro? Holy crap. Amazing. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of, of uh, uh Dave Zed from Generation Zed podcast? No, no. I want to get you both on to talk about UAPs. You guys are you you, you, you both I love that. I would just sit there with a thumb in my ass and just listen to you guys. <laughs> Well, my, much of my research is UAP related, uh, but a lot of them don't want to get rid of the dogma. And dude, I'm like you, bro. Can I ever tell you what happened to me one time? No, no. I did a post where I was talking about how the stock market's going to crash in Libra because I because it always crashes in Libra and this and that. And I've been predicting it for a year now. And we're in Libra now. And today's the day that the Vatican wanted all their money pulled. And then we go into that deeper and everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And we were, where was I going with this? We were, um, I was going into all that. And then I wrote how um, Omicron, the variant, right? Um, Omicron Draconis is Draco, whose tail ends in Sagittarius. The Omicron mm -hmm. variant started in Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Somehow, Corey Good got a hold of my Facebook post and reposted it. And then I got a bunch of Corey good people coming here. So I reached out to him in good spirit. That's and I was amazing, like, well, dude. Amazing. About my work. Mm -hmm. And he never replied. I don't know if he's still in touch with David Wilcock or whatever's going on. But to be honest, I don't know. What's your thought on Corey? I like Corey. Um, he's a lot of the same vein of Maxwell uh, to me. Um, I think he's a good – I saw his critique of you. Right? Was mean? that the guy you emailed? And he said some things, right? No, 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 no. That was Bill Donahue. All right. Well, okay. dude, you're killing it. Forget I mean, I like Bill too, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think they're all the same same lines of research. I think that um, I like them. You know, you got to understand, though, uh, my dad's a Bible scholar. So what was happening when I was growing up is I was having uh, people like that guy at my house almost every weekend to do uh, lectures. So I, you know, that's why I don't want to go on HL aliens. Why? Cause I, I've had dinner with people, bro. They'll screw with your language, all that. So it's so what I, I think they're good people. I love Donahue. I love good. I love Maxwell. I've always loved Maxwell, especially obviously. Um, but I like them all. I think that you're carving your own niche in this phenomenon and there's a role and a mantle on you that you're stepping into even now. And, uh, you got to bear the weight heavy as the head that wears the crown. Yeah. And so you've got to step into that, bro. You're gonna deal with shit a lot. A lot. I have no mentors. I can't even imagine what you're dealing with, bro. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's that's my that's what I'm saying. I actually, I actually teach for Santos Bonacci at a syncretism school online. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Do it, bro. Swing that bat, bro. You're gonna kill it. I'm doing it. So, Nate, thanks, man. Listen, I I was gonna have you back on for a UFO show, but you drank a butt ice on my show, so you're fired. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's a cheap beer, bro. I'm cheap building beer. up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's football Saturday, bro. I'm watching some good football. And, yeah, so I loved it. Mac, Micah, you're, you're a gentleman. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, your, no, thanks for sharing what you're having. I'm going to try and coordinate one with you and Dave, and then I'll let for you sure. guys just go back and forth, and I'll just sit here for and sure. uh, pitch in when I can. Um, but, Nate, thank you, man. I'm going to have this up tonight. I'll send you the link. Okay. God bless you, Mike. I love you, buddy. I'll see you. You too. Take care, man.